Hi everyone, thanks for visiting my channel. If you are new, welcome. I'm Carol and I'm so glad that you stopped by. I hope you'll consider subscribing, like and share my videos and follow me on social media. I will leave all the links in the description box below. So today we are gonna be talking about what to do with these guys. These are dehydrated potatoes, as you can tell from the title of our video. And um, I dehydrated these in my last video and we showed you guys how to do it. And I've had a lot of you contact me and say, okay, that's really cool, but what do I do with them? So today we're gonna talk about what to do with them. So technically you can use dehydrated potatoes in just about any way that you would use a fresh potato. You can put them in soups and stews. You can rehydrate them and make potato salad with them. You can make scalloped potatoes, which is one of the things that we're gonna be talking about today. There are a lot of things you can do with them. You can rehydrate them and you can fry them. So you're not really limited. The whole idea behind dehydrating them or dehydrating any food really is for long-term or longer term food storage and to free up some space because they're dehydrated they're not going to take up as much space as they would say if you froze them or if you canned them i had this discussion with someone in our canning group we talked about the benefits of dehydrating versus canning a lot of it is just about space it's just another way to store something that we like to have on our shelves and available and to keep it shelf stable. So today, um, the focus of my video is going to be making scalloped potatoes with them. I am going to bring you some other videos on ways to use them, but today, for today's purposes, we're really going to focus on making scalloped potatoes with them. So there are a lot of ways to do this. You can just use your dehydrated potatoes and add fresh ingredients to make scalloped potatoes just like you would with fresh potatoes. Or I'm gonna show you how to also make a sauce, actually a powdered mix that you can have ready to put with your dried potatoes to make them scalloped potatoes. It's gonna be really nice because it's, it's shelf stable as well as the potatoes. You can use it for longer term food storage and it's ready to go. And actually, I really need to dedicate this video to my friend Beth. Um, she and her granddaughter Jocelyn watch my channel together. She contacted me a while back and asked me if I could do a DIY version of Betty Crocker's scalloped potatoes so that we could have something on our shelf but would be better than Betty's version. So actually I want to dedicate today's video to Beth. She's lovely. Many of you are lovely. So many of you contact me and we have messages back and forth and I just love that. But Beth has been following me for quite some time and she and Jocelyn uh, frequently send me little messages. So I'm gonna dedicate this video to them and we are going to do a shelf stable, better than Betty Crocker's scallop potatoes. That's really what we're gonna focus on today. What we're gonna do is we're going to put together our mix. You're gonna need some milk, some flour, some cornstarch, some seasonings. We're gonna mix that all together and I'm gonna make a batch of it that we can store in a jar. But make sure you check the description box because I'm also going to leave you instructions for if you just, if you don't wanna make the mix in bulk, I will leave the amounts you would need to just make it on the fly to use your dehydrated potatoes to make scalloped potatoes. So. Let's get started. I'm going to bring you in close and show you how to put the mix together. And I'm going to show you how to make better than Betty's scalloped potatoes with our very own dehydrated potatoes and our DIY mix. Okay, guys, here we go. Need a nice big mixing bowl. We are going to start with two cups of dry instant milk. And to our milk, we are going to add one cup of flour. We're gonna add one cup of cornstarch. We're gonna add a half a cup of dried onion flakes. We're also gonna add a half a cup of dried parsley. You could also use dried chives if you prefer. We're going to add two tablespoons of seasoned salt. If you do not want to use seasoned salt, just use regular salt. I love seasoned salt. 
Just adds tons of extra flavor. You also want two tablespoons of ground mustard. And we want one tablespoon of powdered garlic. You could use more, all the seasonings are to your taste, but the amounts I'm giving you are a good place to start. And then we need some freshly ground black pepper, about a tablespoon. If you don't like the black flecks in your sauce, you can always um, use white pepper instead. You'll get a similar flavor. So now what we wanna do is just take a whisk and we are going to whisk this all together. Okay, now I am going to, I'm gonna store mine in a mason jar. So I'm just gonna use my funnel and carefully get my mix into my jar. Okay, we have our mix all mixed together. Um, I went ahead and put it in my jar. You will have a little more than you can store in a quart jar. But if you wanna have scalloped potatoes in a jar, you can go ahead and put your mix on the bottom of your jar and then top it with three cups of dried potatoes. My friend Cindy, she likes to put her mix in a baggie and then she puts the baggie on top of her potatoes. I'm not a fan of plastic baggies for long-term storage, um, at least not the sandwich ones because I think things tend to take on the flavor of plastic if you let them sit for very long. Um, so I prefer to just put it in the bottom of the jar, but that's up to you. Then just a little word of wisdom, make sure you check the date on your powdered milk. Um, just about everything else will last a really long time, but your powdered milk can spoil. So I would date it with the best by date on your powdered milk that you're using. So check the container your milk came in and see what the best by date is. And then I would date um, this jar and this jar so that you know to use it to make them by that date. Um, but it has a, it, um, powdered milk has a fairly long shelf life, but I wouldn't want to use it past that because I have kept some so long that you can tell that it does go bad once it's opened. So anyway, there's that. Now we're going to be making straight up scalloped potatoes here. Many think of scalloped potatoes as having cheese in them. True scalloped potatoes do not have cheese in them. Um, potatoes au gratin has cheese in them, so that's kind of the difference. Au gratin is the cheese part. Um, so you can make these au gratin if you would like. You can purchase some, um, I would purchase a good quality powdered cheddar cheese. Make sure it doesn't have any fillers or any artificial flavors, colors, that kind of thing. This one's pretty good. This is premium cheddar cheese powder and everything in it is all natural. So you could use this. This also makes a great prep for mac and cheese. Um, you can put however much pasta you want in a jar um, and make a sauce out of this as well for mac and cheese. So that's for another day, but it does make great mac and cheese. So you can buy just about any flavored powdered cheese that you like. This is cheddar, but they have white cheddar, they have Monterey Jack, they have just about every flavor under the sun powdered. So just like I said, make sure it doesn't have anything artificial or yucky stuff in it, no fillers, nothing like that. So make sure you read the label. The other thing I'd like to add is you can change this up a million different ways. You can add you can use any add-ins that you like, any uh, dried um, seasonings that you like. You could also use dehydrated veggies if you want to add some veggies to it. That would be fine if you dehydrate other things. So you could change this up a million different ways and make it yours by adding more dried spices and seasonings and dehydrated vegetables. Now the other thing I did want to mention is as I was thinking about this recipe and making this, this is also going to be a great prep for making potatoes stroganoff, which is another Betty Crocker in a box thing. But if you want to do kind of like a hamburger helper type of thing, um, I am going to leave the recipe for you, but you would use 
one of these, your mix, your three cups of potatoes, and then you could saute some mushrooms with some ground beef, fresh mushrooms, fresh ground beef, and add some sour cream to it. So anyway, I will leave the instructions for that also in the description box, so be sure to check that out. So let's move on to making some delicious scallop potatoes with everything we just mixed up. Okay, so we are going to start by dissolving our mix. Now you can totally do this with um, water. I'm feeling a little extra today and I want mine a creamy, a little more creamy. Like I said, it's totally fine to use just water, but I want mine a little bit creamy. So I am going to take one cup of cold milk and I'm going to dissolve my mix in that. We're going to make a slurry, just like you would make a cornstarch slurry. Now, if you were just using water, I would dissolve my mix in a cup of cold water. Okay, our mix is all dissolved. And you can do this, some recipes say to just pour hot water all over everything, but I have found that, that cornstarch and flour dissolve better in cold. So I would do cold water if you're gonna just use straight up water or use one cup of milk. You could use one cup of cream depending on how creamy you want your scallop potatoes. That's up to you. So we're gonna go ahead and pour in our potatoes. You can use a casserole dish. I love cast iron. You guys know this about me if you've hung around my channel very much. So I'm gonna use my cast iron and I'm going to pour three cups of my dehydrated potatoes in my cast iron pan. I'm going to top it with my sauce that I just made. And then we're going to add two cups of hot water. And I just heated some on my stove. It doesn't have to be boiling, but hot. You want it nice and hot. So I'm gonna add two cups of hot water. And I'm just gonna give that a little stir just to make sure everything is mixed together nicely. And then we are going to add some delicious butter on top. So about four pats of butter. Add a little more richness to our scallop potatoes. And then I'm gonna cover this with foil and I'm going to let it sit while my oven preheats to 350 degrees. Okay guys, my oven is all heated up. One of the reasons why you want to add everything, your, especially your hot liquid and let things sit before you put it in the oven is it gives your potatoes a chance to kind of soften a little bit and it kind of starts the cooking process. So I've covered mine with foil. If you have a lid that fits your pan, you can you just use your lid. We're gonna pop it in the oven for 30 minutes. We're gonna remove the lid and or the foil after 30 minutes and let it continue to cook for another 20 minutes or so until it's done and golden brown and beautiful around the sides. Okay guys, we are back. I, just like I told you, I let my potatoes bake with the foil on for 30 minutes and then I removed my foil. I baked them another 20 to 25 minutes and now I've let them sit for about 10 minutes. You wanna give them a little bit of time to cool off just a little bit, but they turned out fantastic. I'm gonna show you here. Look how beautiful. Hopefully it'll focus. So let's give them a taste and see how we did. They are super creamy. Now I really like the addition of adding some fresh milk because it's because the powdered milk is non-fat. The sauce is delicious that way, but I really like mine creamy. So I like the addition of using a cup of fresh milk. Um, it just makes it nice. So let's taste them. perfect texture. You would never know they'd been dehydrated. So really, really yummy. I think you could even go up a little bit on the amount of salt that we used. Um, again, I use seasoned salt, so I probably could have used a little bit more of that since it has some other seasonings mixed with it. You'll just have to play around with the flavor profile and see what you like, but they are delicious. This is a great prep for a starter.
where you add fresh ingredients or you can prep it so that it's a full meal and you just add some hot water and pop it in the oven. Either way is fantastic and like I said, you can change this up a million ways, um, adding different kinds of meats, different kinds of cheeses. Um, you could also add fresh cheese to this before you bake it off if you wanna make it au gratin. You don't have to use the dehydrated cheese. Those are just ideas if you want it all to be shelf stable and ready to pop into the oven. If you want it to be a starter and you, can, you add fresh ingredients, the sky's the limit, whatever you have in your uh, refrigerator or in your pantry arsenal would be fantastic. So again, I'm gonna leave you some ideas in the description box below, but you guys, if you have a dehydrator, you need to get yourself some dehydrated potatoes on your pantry shelves because they're fantastic and wonderful to have on hand. And even if you do nothing but make these scalloped potatoes, it's delicious. So I hope you'll give them a try. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me today. I hope I answered your questions about how to use dehydrated potatoes. If you have any other questions or you have comments, please leave them for me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next time. Have a great day, guys.